Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Retina Roundup. I am Dr. Mayur Chaudhary, fellow in Vitro Retina and Ocular Oncology and I am bringing you this month's top 6 articles. Let's move to the first article which aims to investigate incidence and causes of acute vision loss during anti-vegger therapy for neovascular age-related macular degeneration during a 4-year follow-up. This retrospective study included 76 treatment knife patients with neovascular AMD and found out that 39.5% eyes had acute vision loss with disrupted ellipsoid zone. Study concluded that approximately half of the patients with AMD experienced acute vision loss during a 4-year follow-up. Despite continuous anti-VEGF treatment, most patients recovered from vision losses temporarily. However, they experienced worst visual outcome subsequently. Moving on to the second study, which is optical coherence tomography biomarkers for conversion to exudative neovascular age-related macular degeneration. The study included 458 eyes with intermediate AMD. During the follow-up, 18.1% eyes progressed to exudative macular neovascularization. Thick double layer sign, interretinal hyperreflective foci, fellow eye exudative macular neovascularization found out to be associated with increased progression from intermediate AMD to exudative macular neovascularization. Next study proves an ensemble of deep convolutional neural networks is more accurate and reliable than board certified ophthalmologists at detecting multiple diseases in retinal fundus photographs. In this study, 43,055 fundus images were used to classify diabetic retinopathy, glaucoma, age related macular degeneration, and normalize. Board certified ophthalmologists achieved a mean accuracy of 72.7% over all classes, while the DCE achieved a mean accuracy of 79.2% proving a deep learning model could more accurately and reliably classify four categories of fundus images compared with the board certified ophthalmologist. Moving on to the next study, which compares surgical versus conservative approach in combined hematoma of retina and retinal pigment epithelium at pediatric age. Posterior location of the tumor, irregular configuration of the foveal contour and ellipsoid zone defect in OCT. Subretinal exudates and prominent vascular torsicity were associated with poor visual acuity. Best corrected visual acuity improved by 68.8% in the eyes that underwent intervention, whereas 12.9% in eyes that were managed conservatively. Hence, proving vitroretinal surgery is safe and effective in improving and reducing retinal distortion in Zone 1 CHRP in the children. Next study is about long-term complication of conventional and chandelier-assisted scleral buckle for primary repair of regimentogenous retinal detachment. In this retrospective study, conventional use of indirect ophthalmoscope in group 1 and wide-angle visualization with chandelier endoillumination method in group 2. Study concluded that using wide-angle visualization with chandelier endoillumination in the scleral buckle surgery Favorable surgical outcomes can be achieved in post-operative long-term period with fewer complications. Moving on to the last study, which compared anatomical and functional outcome in delayed onset versus concurrent retinal detachment in endophthalmitis. This was a retrospective study in which the subjects were categorized into two groups, endophthalmitis with delayed onset retinal detachment and that with concurrent retinal detachment. No significant difference were found between the group in the type of the retinal detachment retinal breaks, number of the quadrants involved, or proliferative vitroretinopathy grid. On comparing the two groups, the outcome shows a few difference in presentation between the group, but anatomical and functional outcomes were almost the same. That's it for this month. See you next month with new interesting 5 articles. Thank you.